Hello everyone. Welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about some of important questions and answers along with their rationales in the view of nursing competitive exams. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. First question is, a nurse is taking care of a patient with ascites. What is the nurse considered to be the cause of ascites? The options are A. Portal hypotension B. Kidney malfunction C. Diminished plasma protein level and D. Decreased production of potassium And the answer is Answer C. Diminished plasma protein level A deficit of this protein lowers the osmotic pressure in the intravascular space leading to a fluid shift. Next question. Chorionic bullous sampling CVS is a test carried out during options are option A 11 to 14 weeks of pregnancy, B 6 to 10 weeks of pregnancy, C 8 to 10 weeks of pregnancy and D 20 to 22 weeks of pregnancy and the answer is option A 11 to 14 weeks of pregnancy. Chorionic villus sampling is a form of prenatal diagnosis to determine chromosomal or genetic disorders in the fetus. Chorionic villus sampling is usually done between 11 and 14 weeks of pregnancy earlier than other prenatal diagnostic tests such as amniocentesis. Next question is, the standard method of determining whether a patient is infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis is, options are A. Manto test, B. Vidal test, C. Pulmonary function test and D. Molecular testing and the answer is option A. Manto test. The vital test is used to diagnose enteric fever also known as type fever. Pulmonary function tests are done to diagnose certain types of lung disease such as asthma, bronchitis and emphysema. Molecular testing is used to detect the genetic material of dengue virus in the blood. Next question is while monitoring a client newly diagnosed with diabetes mellitus, which signs of complication would indicate hyperglycemia? The options are A. Polyuria B. Diaphoresis C. Hypertension D. Increased pulse rate And the answer is option A. Polyuria Classic symptoms of hyperglycemia include polydipsia, polyuria and polyphagia. Diaphoresis may occur in hypoglycemia. Next question is while preparing a care plan for a client with diabetes mellitus who has hyperglycemia, the highest priority is given on which problem? Options are A. Lack of knowledge B. Inadequate fluid volume C. Compromised family coping and D. Inadequate consumption of nutrients And the answer is Option B. Inadequate fluid volume an increased blood glucose level will cause the kidney to excrete glucose in urine. This glucose is accompanied by fluids and electrolytes, causing an osmotic diuresis leading to dehydration. Next question is, which of the following is a characteristic of primary hyperparathyroidism? Options are A. Diarrhea B. Polyuria C. Polyphagia D. Weight gain And the answer is option B. Polyuria Hypercalcemia is the hallmark of hyperparathyroidism. Elevated serum calcium levels produce osmotic diuresis and thus polyuria. Next question is, a client is diagnosed with pheochromocytoma, which is the characteristic of this condition. Options are A. Causes profound hypotension B. Is manifested by severe hypoglycemia C. Is not curable and is treated symptomatically D. Causes the release of excessive amount of catecholamines And the answer is Option D. Causes the release of excessive amount of catecholamines Pheochromocytoma is a catecholamine producing tumor and causes excess secretion of excessive amounts of epinephrine and norepinephrine Next question is Cricoid pressure is applied during intubation in order to prevent Options are a. Bleeding B. Infiltration C. Passive aspiration of gastric contents and D. Immobilization And the answer is option C. 
passive aspiration of gastric contents. Next question is, euthanasia was first legalized in, options are, A. Switzerland, B. Netherlands, C. France, D. Italy. And the answer is, B. Netherlands. Next question is, select the right order of donning of personal protective equipments. Options are, A. Glove, gown, mask, eye protection. B. Gown, glove, eye protection, mask. C. Glove, mask, gown, eye protection. And D. Gown, mask, eye protection, glove. And the answer is option D. Gown, mask, eye protection, and gloves. Next question is Chylothorax is a. Options are A. Lymphatic flow disorder. B. Endocrine disorder. C. ENT disorder. And D. None of the above. And the answer is A. Lymphatic flow disorder. Next question is Cushing syndrome is marked by options are A. High levels of cortisol. B. Low levels of cortisol. C. High levels of thyroxine. D. Low levels of thyroxine. And the answer is option A. High levels of cortisol. Cushing syndrome is marked by high level of cortisol. Addison's disease is marked by low levels of cortisol and aldosterone. Next question is, how do you know that intercostal drainage tube is functioning? The options are A. Continuous bubbling in the water seal drainage. B. Continuous bubbling in the tube. C. Oscillation of water column in drainage bottle. And D. No bubbling in the drainage bag. And the answer is option C. Oscillation of water column in drainage bottle. Next question is, tall peaked T wave is present in options are A. Hypokalemia, B. Hyperkalemia, C. Hyponatremia, and D. Hypernatremia. And the answer is option B. Hyperkalemia. Here, you can see the difference between a normal ECG and an ECG in case of hyperkalemia where there is flat P waves, prolonged PR interval, widened QRS complexes, and tall peaked T waves. And here are some of the important electrolyte disorders and the ECG changes which correspond to it. Next question is, the electrolyte whose level is the primary determinant of the extracellular fluid concentration is options are A. Sodium, B. Potassium, C. Magnesium, and D. Phosphate. And the answer is option A. Sodium. Sodium is both an electrolyte and mineral. Sodium ions are the major cation in the extracellular fluid. Sodium is regulated by ADH, thirst, and the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. A loss or gain of sodium is usually accompanied by a loss or gain of water. Next question is, clinical sign of hypocalcemia is, options are A, Kernick sign, B, Chostek sign, C, Rosing sign, and D, Homan sign. And the answer is, option B, Chostek sign. Kernick sign and Brudzinski sign are characteristic of meningitis. Rosing sign is characteristic of appendicitis. McBurney sign or R1 sign is characteristic of acute appendicitis. And Homan sign is a characteristic feature of deep vein thrombosis. In hypocalcemia, Chostek sign is the characteristic sign, which is short contractions, that is twitching of the facial muscles elicited by tapping the facial nerve below and in front of the ear, approximately 2 cm ventral to the Yet low. Next question is Symptoms of pregnancy induced hypertension are Options are A. Sudden weight loss, headache B. Uterine contractions, headache C. Proteinuria, headache, double vision and D. Headache, abdominal distension and contraction And the answer is Option C. Proteinuria, headache, double vision Next question is when can you hear a baby's heartbeat with a fetoscope? Options are A. 8 weeks, B. 10 weeks, C. 12 weeks, and D. 20 weeks. And the answer is option D. 20 weeks. Next question is, 
Intravenous leaking of vesicant drug into surrounding tissue is known as options are A. Infiltration B. Extravasation C. Hematoma D. Thrombophlebitis And the answer is B. Extravasation Intravenous leaking of vesicant drug is known as extravasation and non-vesicant drug is known as infiltration. Next question is, in myocardial infarction, creatinine kinase increase in serum within options are A. 3 to 6 hours, B. 1 hour, C. 12 hours, and D. 24 hours. And the answer is option A. 3 to 6 hours. Next question is, an ABG analysis report shows pH is 7.26, PCO2 is 30 mmHg, and bicarbonate is 21 milliequivalent per liter. The options are A. Uncompensated respiratory acidosis, B. Fully compensated metabolic acidosis, C. Partially compensated metabolic acidosis, and D. Partially compensated respiratory acidosis. And the answer is option C, partially compensated metabolic acidosis. When we look into the values, the value of pH is 7.26, which is below than the normal range and hence it is acidosis. And the bicarbonate level is also below the normal range, that is 21, which says it is metabolic acidosis. When we look into the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, it also goes below the normal range that is 30. And here the body is trying to correct the imbalance by decreasing the level of partial pressure of carbon dioxide and hence we say it partially compensated metabolic acidosis. And this could be seen in case of hyperventilation where the CO2 is blown off. Next question is, who developed the psychoanalytic theory of personality development and the options are a sigmund freud b maslow c erickson and d none of the above the answer is option a sigmund freud sigmund freud developed the psychoanalytic theory of personality development maslow's hierarchy of needs is a motivational theory in psychology comprising a five-tier model of human needs Erickson developed the theory of psychosocial development. Next question is, Freud theory of psychological development in childhood takes place during how many psychosexual stages? The options are A, 3, B, 2, C, 5, and D, 4. And the answer is option C, 5. Freud theory of psychological development in childhood takes place during five psychosexual stages that are oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. Next question is, what is a normal ETCO2 reading? The options are A, 15 mmHg, B, 25 to 35 mmHg, C, 35 to 45 mmHg, and D, 10 to 30 mmHg. And the answer is option C, 35 to 45 mmHg. MMHG. N-tidal carbon dioxide ETCO2 monitoring is a non-invasive technique which measures the partial pressure of carbon dioxide at the end of an exhaled breath, which is expressed as a percentage of CO2 or MMHG. The normal values are 5% to 6% carbon dioxide, which is equivalent to 35 to 45 MMHG. The next question is, the urea breath test is a rapid diagnostic procedure used to identify infection caused by options are A. H. Influenza, B. E. coli, C. H. pylori, and D. Streptococci. And the answer is option C. Helicobacter pylori. Next question is, HbA1c test is used to estimate the options are A. Hemoglobin level in the blood. B. Glucose level in the blood, C. Hematocrit level in the blood, and D. Blood urea nitrogen level in the blood. And the answer is option B. Glucose level in the blood. Next question is, a patient receiving morphine and has a bradypnea, what intervention should the nurse anticipate? Options are A. Suction, B. Mechanical ventilation, C. Naloxone administration, and D. Dopamine administration. And the answer is 
Option C, Naloxone Administration. Next question is, which drug is contraindicated when taking warfarin? Options are A. Ferrous sulfate, B. Acetyl salicylic acid, C. Atenolol, and D. Chlorpromazine. And the answer is B. Acetyl salicylic acid. Next question is Patient receiving electroconvulsive therapy for treatment of severe depression. Which of the following indicates that the client's ECT has been effective? Options are A. Unconscious, B. Hypertension, C. Grand mal seizure and D. Hyperthermia and the answer is option C. Grand mal seizure. Next question is drug given early in symptoms of anaphylaxis is options are A. Epinephrine, B. Antacid, C. Antiplatelet and D. Bronchodilator and the answer is option A. Epinephrine. Next question is a patient has a total knee replacement and a continuous passive motion device is used to Options are A. Improve joint flexion B. Maintain muscle tone C. Prevent tissue breakdown and D. Avoid formation of a blood clot And the answer is Option A. Improve joint flexion Next question is Brain attack patient will be positioned initially in Options are A. Prone B. Lateral, C. Supine, and D. Trendelenburg. And the answer is option B. Lateral. Next question. After the procedure of subtotal thyroidectomy, nurse receive the patient in post-operative area. What will be the immediate action of the nurse? Options are A. Inspect the incision. B. Instruct the client not to speak. C. Place a tracheostomy set at the bedside. And D. Provide supine position. And the answer is option C. Place a tracheostomy set at the bedside. Next question is Which enzyme helps for the digestion of fat after emulsification? Options are A. Renin, B. Amylase, C. Lipase, and D. Trypsin. And the answer is option C. Lipase. Next question is a nurse received the serum electrolyte level report of a patient. What electrolyte in the intracellular fluid should the nurse consider most important? Options are A. Sodium B. Calcium C. Chloride D. Potassium And the answer is Option D. Potassium Potassium is both an electrolyte and a mineral. It is the main intracellular fluid cation. It controls intracellular fluid osmolality and osmotic pressure. It regulates cell excitability. Potassium is a major intracellular electrolyte. In fact, 98% of the body's potassium is inside these cells. Potassium influences both skeletal and cardiac muscle activity. Sodium is the most abundant cation of the extracellular compartment. Chloride is an extracellular, not intracellular anion. Next question is, a patient recovering from general anesthesia, in which position the patient should be placed? Options are A. Semi Fowlers, B. Side Lying, C. High Fowlers, and D. Trendelenburg. And the answer is option B. Side Lying. Next question is, Dr. Order reads, administer 1 gram of injection meropenem in 100 ml of normal saline solution in 60 minutes. What is the flow rate? Drop factor is 10 drops equals 1 ml. And the options are A. 33 drops per minute, B. 17 drops per minute, C. 50 drops per minute, and D. 10 drops per minute. And the answer is option B. 17 drops per minute. Looking into the calculation, 100 ml of normal saline solution in 60 minutes. The formula for flow rate is equal to desired volume in ml multiplied by drop factor divided by time in minutes, which gives the drops per minute. Here the desired volume in ml is 100, drop factor is 10 and time in minutes will be 1 multiplied by 60. So applying all into the formula. 100 multiplied by 10 divided by 60, we get the answer 16.6, that is 17 drops per minute. The next question is, 
The main function of underwater seal drainage of the chest tube drainage system is Options are A. To check the tidaling with inspiration and expiration To allow air to exit from the pleural space and prevent backflow of air from entering the pleural cavity C. To know the amount of drainage and D. It allows air to move freely in and out of the pleural space and the answer is option B to allow air to exit from the pleural space and prevent backflow of air from entering the pleural cavity. The principles of the chest tube drainage includes gravity, chest drain placed below the patient's bed, water seal which allows the air from the pleural cavity and prevents backflow of air. Suction is needed if gravity is not enough or the respiration is too weak. The next question is, a nurse is taking care of patient with laryngectomy, that is radical neck dissection. In which position the patient should be placed? The options are A, semi fowlers, B, supine, without pillows, C, left lateral, and D, knee chest position. And the answer is A, semi fowlers. Place the client in a semi fowlers or fowlers position to maintain a patent airway and minimize edema. Next question is, maternal mortality rate is the number of maternal deaths per, options are A, 1000 live birth, B, 10,000 live birth, C, 100,000 live birth, and D, 100 live birth. And the answer is, option C, 100,000 live birth. The next question is, where do you position your hands to give abdominal thrusts to a responsive choking victim? And the options are A, just above the navel, B. Just below the navel, C. On the umbilicus, and D. Left lower quadrant of abdomen. And the answer is option A. Just above the navel. The next question is, what is the name for the emergency treatment for obstruction of airway in adults? The options are A. The Helminch maneuver, B. The Valsalva maneuver, C. Jaw thrust maneuver, and D. Chin lift maneuver. And the answer is option A, the Hamish maneuver. Abdominal thrusts, also called the Hamish maneuver, are one of the main first aid treatment of airway obstruction in adults. Next question is infant mortality rate is the number of deaths per options are A, 10,000 live births of children under one year of age, B, 1,000 live births of children under 1 year of age, C, 100,000 live births of children under 1 year of age, and D, 100 live births of children under 1 year of age. And the answer is option B, 1,000 live births of children under 1 year of age. Next question is, what is an intentional thought is threatening to touch a person without their consent? Options are A, assault, B, battery, C, defamation, and D, negligence. And the answer is A. Assault. Assault, an intentional thought, is threatening to touch a person without their consent. Battery is an another intentional thought, is touching a person without their consent. Defamation is making false statements about a person in writing or orally that leads to the destruction of person's reputation. Negligence is a non-intentional thought. Negligence occurs when the nurse fails to follow the established policies, procedures, and standards of care. Next question is, a nurse is supposed to check the central venous pressure of a client. What is the appropriate level for an arterial line transducer? Options are A. Above the chest level, B. Below the chest level, C. Phlebostatic axis, and D. Below the patient's bed. And the answer is option C phlebostatic axis. Next question is, in which stage or phase of wound healing granulation occurs? And the options are A. Hemostasis phases, B. Inflammatory phase, C. Proliferative phase, and D. Maturation phase. And the answer is option C. Proliferative phase. Next question is, a patient with acute renal failure becomes confused and irritable. Which lab value is most likely cause of these symptoms? Options are A. Hyperkalemia, B. Hypoglycemia, C. Hypokalemia, and D. Increased blood urea nitrogen level. 
and the answer is option d increased blood urea nitrogen level an increased blood urea nitrogen level inducing uremia is toxic to the central nervous system and causes mental cloudiness and confusion and can result in a loss of consciousness next question is the most serious complication of meningitis in young children is options are a seizure b blindness c peripheral circulatory collapse and d hydrocephalus and the answer is option c peripheral circulatory collapse peripheral circulatory collapse also called waterhouse friderichsen syndrome is adrenal gland failure due to bleeding into the adrenal gland it is usually caused by severe meningococcal infection or other severe bacterial infection and the symptoms include shock petechiae ecchymotic lesions vomiting prostration and hypotension next question is intravenous leaking of non vesicant drug into surrounding tissue is known as options are a infiltration b extravasation c hematoma d thrombophlebitis and the answer is option a infiltration intravenous leaking of non vesicant fluid is called infiltration and the vesicant drug is called extravasation next question is a nurse is taking care of patient with post bronchoscopy procedure in which position the nurse should place the patient options are a supine without pillows b semi fowlers c left lateral and d knee chest position and the answer is option b semi fowlers to prevent choking or aspiration resulting from an impaired ability to swallow semi fowlers position is provided next question is the nurse is monitoring a client for the early signs and symptoms of dumping syndrome which findings indicate this occurrence options are a sweating and pallor b bradycardia and indigestion c double vision and chest pain d abdominal cramping and pain and the answer is option a sweating and pallor early manifestation of dumping syndrome occur 10 to 30 minutes after eating symptoms include vertigo tachycardia syncope sweating pallor palpitations and the desire to lie down next question is nephrotic syndrome is characterized by options are a proteinuria hyperalbuminemia hypolipidemia edema b proteinuria hypoalbuminemia hypolipidemia edema c proteinuria hyperalbuminemia hyperlipidemia edema and d proteinuria hypoalbuminemia hyperlipidemia edema and the answer is option d proteinuria hypoalbuminemia hyperlipidemia edema next question is what is the term used for when the greatest diameter of the fetal head has passed through the brim of the pelvis and the options are a flexion b abduction c expulsion and d engagement and the answer is option d engagement next question is the nurse observes the client's amniotic fluid and decides that it appears normal because it is options are a light red color fluid with small particles of vernix caseosa person b light yellow small particles of vernix caseosa person c clear or colorless small particles of vernix caseosa person and d greenish yellow small particles of vernix caseosa person and the answer is option c clear or colorless small particles of vernix caseosa person by 36 weeks gestation normal amniotic fluid is colorless with small particles of vernix caseosa person next question is clinical sign of deep vein thrombosis is options are a kernick sign b chostek sign c rosing sign and d homan sign and the answer is option d homan sign kernick sign and brudzinski signs are characteristics of meningitis rosing sign is characteristic of appendicitis mcbunny sign or oron sign or the characteristics of acute appendicitis Homan sign is characteristic of deep vein thrombosis and Chostek sign is a characteristic sign of hypocalcemia. Next question is a casted extremity of a client is being assessed by a nurse. A sign indicating infection is options are a diminished distal pulse, 
B dependent edema, C presence of a hot spot on the cast, and D coolness and pallor of the extremity. And the answer is option C presence of a hot spot in the cast. Next question is while carrying a client with diagnosis of gout, which lab value would the nurse expect to note in the client? Options are A calcium level of 9 mg per dl. B. Uric acid level of 8.6 mg per dl. C. Potassium level of 4.1 mg equivalent per liter. D. Phosphorus level of 3.1 mg per dl. And the answer is option B. Uric acid level of 8.6 mg per dl. Next question is the nurse is assessing the skin of a client diagnosed with psoriasis. Which of the characteristic is associated with this disorder? Options are A. Oily skin. B. Clear thin nail bits, C. Red purplish scaly lesions, D. Silvery white scaly patches. And the answer is option D. Silvery white scaly patches. Next question is what is the antidote for digitalis toxicity? And the options are A. Vitamin K, B. Protamine sulfate, C. Digibine, D. Epinephrine. And the answer is option C. Digibine. Next question is, patient is taking digoxin along with the furosemide which increases the risk of options are A. Hyponatremia and digoxin toxicity B. Hyperkalemia and digoxin toxicity C. Hypokalemia and digoxin toxicity and D. Hyponatremia and digoxin toxicity And the answer is C. Hypokalemia and digoxin toxicity Furosemide is a loop diuretic and this medication wastes potassium Hypokalemia increases the risk of a patient developing digoxin toxicity. Next question is, early signs and symptoms of digoxin toxicity are, select all that apply. Options are A. Dysrhythmias, B. Anorexia, C. Drowsiness, and D. Nausea. And the options are B and D. Anorexia and Nausea. Nausea and anorexia are the early warning signs of digoxin toxicity in adults and it could be followed by vomiting. The others include diarrhea, visual disturbances where patient may report a yellow haze over their visual field, arrhythmias and generalized malaise. Next question is, the most common side effect of nitroglycerin is, options are A. Dysrhythmias, B. Anorexia, C. Drowsiness and D. Headache. And the answer is, option D. Headache. Common side effects are headache, dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea and flushing. The next question is, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is an antibody-mediated reaction characterized by Options are A. Decrease in serum potassium level B. Increase in serum potassium level C. Decrease in platelet count and D. Increase in platelet count And the answer is Option C. Decrease in platelet count Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is an antibody-mediated reaction Characterized by decrease in platelet count, typically a 50% reduction in the platelets from baseline, 5 to 10 days after exposure to heparin. Next question is, digoxin should be stopped if the patient has, options are A, pulse rate more than 100, B, pulse rate less than 60, C, nausea, and D, dyspnea. And the answer is, pulse rate less than 60. The next question is, which drug causes red-orange tears and urine? Options are A. Rifampin, B. Pyrazinamide, C. Ethambutol, and D. Isoniazid. And the answer is option A. Rifampin. Rifampin and its metabolites make color urine, feces, saliva, sputum, sweat, and tears a bright red-orange. The next question is, doctor prescribed 1000 ml normal saline to infuse at a rate of 125 ml per hour. The nurse determines that it will take how many hours for 1 liter to infuse. Options are A. 8 hours, B. 6 hours, C. 4 hours, and D. 9 hours. And the answer is option A. 8 hours. 1000 divided by 125 gives the answer 8. The next question is, a nurse is taking care of post-transplant patient and the doctor prescribes tacrolimus for the patient to prevent Options are A. Parasite infection, B. Diarrhea, C. Organ rejection, and D. Hypoglycemia. And the answer is option C. Organ rejection. 
Tacrolimus is an immunosuppressant drug used to prevent the body from rejecting a transplanted organ. Tacrolimus is typically used to reduce the body's natural immunity in patients who receive kidney, liver, pancreas, lung, and heart transplants. Next question is, while removing the chest tube, nurse should instruct the client to take which action? And the options are A. Inhale slowly B. Exhale very quickly C. Inhale and exhale quickly D. Perform the Valsalva maneuver And the answer is Option D. Perform the Valsalva maneuver When the chest tube is removed, the client is asked to perform the Valsalva maneuver that is take a deep breath, exhale and bear down. The tube is quickly withdrawn and an airtight dressing is taped in place. Next question is, the nurse is assessing a client with respiratory distress syndrome. The nurse should assess for which earliest sign of acute respiratory distress syndrome. Options are A. Bilateral wheezing, B. Inspiratory crackles, C. Intracostal retractions, and D. Increased respiratory rate. And the answer is option D. Increased respiratory rate. The earliest sign of acute respiratory distress syndrome is an increased respiratory rate. This is followed by increasing dyspnea, air hunger, retraction of accessory muscles and cyanosis. The next question is, while taking class for nursing students, the educator tells them that anthrax can be transmitted by options are A. Bites from ticks or flies, B. Direct contact with an infected individual, C. Sexual contact with an infected individual, and D. Ingestion of contaminated undercooked meat. And the answer is option D. Indigestion of contaminated undercooked meat. Anthrax is caused by bacillus anthracis and can be contracted through cuts in skin, gastrointestinal tract, and through inhalations. Next question is, for a patient with healthcare associated infection caused by MRSA, what could be the contact precautions to be initiated? And the options are, a. Gloves and gown B. Gloves and goggles C. Gloves, gown, shoe protectors D. Gloves, gown, goggles and face shield And the answer is Option D. Gloves, gown, goggles and face shield There is a possibility of splashes of body secretions Therefore, a nurse must wear goggles, gown, gloves and face shield Next question is For a client admitted with meningitis What transmission-based precaution a nurse should initiate? The options are A. Private room or cohort the patient B. Personal respiratory protection device C. Private room with a positive airflow pressure D. Mask N95 by the staff And the answer is A. Private room or cohort the client Meningitis is transmitted by droplet infection Cohorting the client is the best option with standard use of mask Next question is a client is admitted in an unresponsive state and diagnosed with HHNS hyperglycemic hyperosmolar non-ketotic syndrome. The nurse would immediately prepare to initiate which of the following orders. And the options are A. Endotracheal intubation B. 100 units of NPH insulin C. IV infusion of normal saline and D. IV infusion of sodium bicarbonate And the answer is option C. IV infusion of normal saline the primary goal of treatment in HHNS is to rehydrate the clients in order to restore fluid volume and to correct the electrolyte deficiency. So here we go with some of the important questions and answers along with the rationals in the view of competitive exams. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.